Hey, what's up and welcome to the Nutrition Kitchen, the science behind. I'm with my nutrition guru, Sarah Pop. Hey, Keon. So let's talk about spaghetti and meatball recipes. Show me what you cooked up with Chef Pollard. Okay, I got my level one, my typical white spaghetti, tomato sauce, and pre-made frozen meatballs. Uh, my level two here is whole wheat spaghetti with the tomato puree and ground beef sauce. And then also I have my level three, which is spaghetti squash with mushroom meatballs. So where should we start? As always, we want to know what is in our food and how it's processed, right? Of course. So let's start with the pre-made spaghetti. Although I can include uh, other ingredients, most pre-made spaghetti is made from just flour and water. But unlike most other flour products we've discussed, pre-made spaghetti does not include leavening. That's because we don't need it to rise as it cooks. Technically, spaghetti is considered a macaroni product and its size distinguishes it from vermicelli and macaroni. Commercially made spaghetti is created through a process called extrusion, where the pasta dough is forced through a dye. Essentially a mold, usually made of metal, to create the unique spaghetti shape. Interestingly, this simple process results in complex changes. It can break down proteins, gelatinized starches, which makes them more accessible to the body. Inactivate enzymes, alter phytochemical levels is also something it does and destroys microbes. Some of these changes are beneficial and some aren't. Almost all of the changes are due to the high temperatures and severe shear stress used in extrusion. That sounds way more complex than just pushing some dough through a cookie cutter. Uh, so, back to the ingredients. Uh, you said they're usually just flour and water, but this is the first time that I don't see enriched flour on here. And what is semolina? Semolina and flour are similar, mm -hmm. but there are two main differences. One, semolina is slightly more coarse or ground into larger pieces. And two, semolina is made from a different type of wheat called durum wheat. Oh, I didn't know there were so many different types of wheat. <laughs> so what is uh, durum wheat and how is it different from other types of wheats? Durum wheats have higher protein content than other wheats, including bread wheat. The main group of proteins in wheat are called gluten. The more gluten or protein in the wheat, the more scaffolding they have, making them particularly tough so they can be stretched into long, thin pieces without breaking. Obviously, that's very useful for making pasta. But just like flour, semolina is usually refined to remove the bran and germ. There are three parts to the whole grain. Remember, the bran, the germ, and the endosperm. If semolina is just the endosperm, obviously that means the bran and the germ have been remo removed, along with all of their beneficial fats, proteins, vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals. So this durum wheat semolina is just another form of highly refined wheat with minimal nutritional value. So semolina is like flour, but it has more protein and the flour particles are slightly bigger. Is that right? Exactly. Okay, uh, and what about this? Uh, so our 100% whole grain spaghetti and this whole grain uh, durum wheat flour. What about that? So it's whole grain. That means it has all the beneficial nutrients from the bran and germ, but the durum wheat flour is ground into the same size as other flours. That means the whole grains have lost their intact structure, so you don't feel as full after eating. And it may disrupt the ability of all the beneficial phytochemicals to interact for all their health benefits, a concept known as synergy. So you're kind of saying that the whole is more than the sum of its parts. That's right. So even 100% whole wheat pasta doesn't have intact grain structure and the corresponding benefits. That said, it's the highest upgrade of wheat pasta. And unlike most other 100% whole wheat products like bread, ready to eat breakfast cereals, pre-made pancakes, flour tortillas, and so on, it doesn't have any artificial or other added ingredients. Okay, wow, so 100% whole grain and no artificial ingredients? That sounds like a winner. Uh, so what about all these other pastas I'm hearing about, uh, like this one? 
actually, those are fantastic alternatives. They are essentially just made from chickpeas. Lentil pasta is another similar option. All right, uh, what about our last upgrade, spaghetti squash? Spaghetti squash is low in calories, but high in vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals. And the only processing it undergoes is the processing in your kitchen. Spaghetti squash naturally cooks into a spaghetti form, but you can turn other vegetables into pasta-like dishes too, like using zucchini to make zoodles. Okay, I'll give those a try. Uh, so what about the other ingredients? Can you tell me about tomato sauce? Sure, well, tomato sauce is an informal term. But essentially, the FDA considers tomato sauce to be a tomato puree with spices added. And what's tomato puree? A form of tomato concentrate that's made by removing the peel, seeds, and core from whole tomatoes. It's the exact same thing as tomato paste, only with more water. So you can convert between purees and paste just by adding or removing water. Purees and paste can only add salt, lemon juice, sodium bicarbonate, spices, and flavoring as additional ingredients. But tomato sauces, since they aren't strictly defined, can add other ingredients as well. Okay, so like added sugar? Precisely. Most tomato sauces have tomato puree or tomato paste as the first ingredient, but many have added sugar too, which adds calories but no nutrients. And it's unnecessary. Tomatoes have some sugar naturally, so tomato sauces don't really even need to add sugar from a flavor standpoint. Oh, no worries there. I know how to look for added sugar now. So how does the processing affect the tomato? You said um, the peel, the seeds, and core are moved, right? Right. So while the peel contains most of the tomato's fiber and a large portion of some beneficial phytochemicals, so those are lost. Heating the tomato increases our ability to absorb the phytochemical lycopene. And tomato sauce accounts for 85% of the lycopene that humans consume. But heating also destroys several other nutrients. So overall, like most other processed foods, tomato sauces, even without added sugar, aren't on the same level as the unprocessed tomatoes they are made from. But when it comes to sauces, tomato purees are definitely an upgrade over a lot of other options. Okay, great. So let's talk about the frozen meatballs. Sure thing, Keon. Let's start with our mission top threats. What are those? Okay, I got this. So enriched flour, added sugar, and saturated fat. Nice. Okay, now tell me if those top threats are in those meatballs. Okay, let's look at this. Uh, I don't see enriched flour on here. Uh, and this includes less than one gram of added sugars. Uh, and the saturated fats. I don't see those, where are those at? They're listed on the left side underneath total fat. Okay, I see that. Uh, it says seven grams and it has a percentage of 37%. What does that mean? Well, that's a general guideline for someone who is eating 2000 calories a day. So if you ate just one serving of those meatballs, you would reach 37% of your recommended daily limit for saturated fat. Is that a lot? Yes. In general, the FDA considers anything over 20% daily value per serving to be high. Ooh, okay, so that's a no-go then. Uh, so what about ground beef? Well, a standard three ounce serving of cooked 80% lean ground beef, which is about the size of a deck of cards, contains almost the exact amount of saturated fat. So in order to stay under 20% daily value, you have to cut the serving size in half. That's why the recipe uses a small amount of ground beef in the sauce rather than making meatballs. Okay, so that makes sense. I'm guessing our homemade plant-based mushroom meatballs, they, they don't have any saturated fat, do they? Well, they do have some, but it's a lot less. And with a plant-based meatball, you still get protein and beneficial fats and phytochemicals, but none of the other baggage that's in ground beef. And because they're made from scratch, you know every single ingredient that's going in them. I call that a win. Thank you, Sarah, for your illuminating insights. You bet. All right, well, let's gear up for episode six, where we level up cheese pizza. We're out.